Hey everyone, Adam here, uh, Corpulent Geek, coming to you with a Star Trek Discovery Threatened Ganglia Mini, where we're going to talk about what else. It's the day before the finale, so we're going to talk about how we think the show ends. I still don't have a cool intro yet, so this'll have to do. This season has been great so far. It's been dominated by two storylines. One, the Mirror Universe, and two... The Klingon War. The Mirror Universe part of the story has been mostly rectified. Although, personally, I think that we're going to revisit it at some point because, no, 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 nothing to do with Lorca. I think that Captain Tilly is still around and she's been captured by the Klingons. But that's for next season. So, with the Mirror Universe storyline, it looks like everything's going to get locked down and classified. At the very least, I have more to say about how they're going to make Spore Drive go away later. I don't know if you could call the Mirror Universe the A plot or the B plot of the season, because time-wise, it's kind of been the B plot. The A plot, the Klingon stuff, has spanned the entire season, where the Mirror Universe, we only really knew about it halfway through the season, or more than halfway through the season. But it seems to me that more people have been interested in the Mirror Universe plot. I hardly ever see anyone say, I have no interest in the Mirror Universe plot. But I hear a lot of people online saying, I don't care about the Klingon War, and the Klingons can go away, and I don't like having to read while watching TV. All right, I can understand that last one a little bit. Because it, it is distracting, if anything, to have to go down and back up. But, see, it doesn't bother me as much because we normally watch with closed captioning, so we can catch little words that other people might miss. Well, the only thing we have left to wrap up with the Mirror Universe... All right, it's not a small thing, but it's Mirror Georgiou still being in this universe. And I think that's all going to tie to uh, how they tie up the other story, the Klingon War. I think I think the key to bringing a at least temporary end to the Klingon War is going to be Lorel, not Lorel and Tyler slash Voke together. I think she is going to be. She's demonstrated she's the manipulative one. She's the smart one. And personally, I just think that Voke is just gone out of Tyler's head. There's no way that Tyler really wants to help her do anything, even if he did. Since technically he's still Voke, body-wise, but not mind-wise, I don't think the Klingons would bother listening to him at all. Sure, they have the Klingon infiltration unit technology that they used to transform him into that, but I think Klingons as a whole, they're going to look at him, that guy's a human, I'm not listening to him. That's why I don't think that Tyler is going to be important to the end of the war. I think it's all going to be about Laurel because she works behind the scenes, and there's already a preview that's out that shows Burnham talking to Laurel about her dream of a unified Klingon empire isn't going to isn't going to come to fruition. I think she's also going to mention the discussion with Voke that she had about how the Klingon people were able to unite with the Andorians and the Tellarites and and other races against a common enemy in the Terrans. They're going to have to mirror that here where all the different Klingon houses, not necessarily Klingons and other races, but all the di different broken up Klingon houses can get together to unite against the Federation. In a way, this war is going to, there's going to be, there's going to be a peace. Laurel's going to explain, not explain, but show whoever is the current, like, top dog in the Klingonness. Like, because no matter what, sure, there's 24 houses, but you know that, one of the houses is big and powerful, and people still kind of look up to it, like, because that was what Cole was before he left. Sure, he had the cloaking technology, which they don't have anymore. Uh, well, all right, no, they do still have the cloaking technology, but the Federation now has a way to see past the current iteration of it. So that big benefit has gone away. Whoever's in charge right now, the Klingons, Laurel's going to talk with that person, most likely him, because that's how Klingons are set up, and show him that, listen, what's the end game here? Because we're just going to end up with a bunch of beat up Klingon houses, and we might have destroyed the Federation. But we need to, and, and she's going to find the right words to break through to him to try and unite all the, the Klingon houses and say that we don't really hold any hopes of, of holding all this, or the whole Federation, if we're able to take it all over. Because we'll just be stretched too thin. And just like how there's going to be a house that's the big kid on the block, there's also going to be a house that's smaller and weaker and was already not looked down upon, but was like, you know, just a small dog in, in the Klingon Empire. 
And then over the course of the day, they're thinking this is, hey, this is my chance to make a big impact and, and grow real big. So they flung themselves into this Federation fight, but they sustained major losses, either through their own use of blowing themselves up or through the Federation actually doing something without a Mirror Universe member at the helm, which it doesn't seem like that's possible, but what you're going to do? This house uh, is on like the verge of collapse, and Lorel's going to be able to use that as a hook in to... Uh, to the Klingons that uh, we, we want to remain Klingon. We want all the Klingons to survive. See, this is still sounding like too goody-goody. There's still some other little piece in there that's missing. But the main piece in there that's missing is going to be whatever it is that Georgiou is going to do. I see lots of people saying that she's going to threaten Praxis. And uh, and if you manage to figure out how to blow up Praxis, like as they're inside Kronos mapping, they'll detect and be like, hey, look, that moon over there is full of stuff that blows up real easy. We'll just threaten that. That would be a good way. Then what would why would the Klingons uh, ever bother to acquiesce? Because then they'll be seen as like the little dog. Maybe that's how Lavrell convinces the Klingons to pull back, to insulate themselves a little bit so that they have time to bolster the defenses around the home world that they all hold so dear. We'll make sure Praxis won't blow up, at least until later on, when when Sulu can fly through the big wave and point to steer the ship into the wave. I did like that part, though. I don't like how they're having tea on the bridge. No need for that. There's a ready room right over there. Just go in there and sit down. Now you spill tea everywhere. That's not cool. I think we're going to hear something along the lines of a quote like, The Federation is weak. We can leave them alone now, and they will pose no threat to us while we rebuild our ships and find a way to fix our cloaks so they can't detect us. And another one of the Klingons talking to the Federation, something along the lines of, Just remember, you only survive because we allow it. I can see something like that. Hostilities will come to an end. There'll be a, a ceasefire and a temporary peace. Aaron Harbert. Sorry, that's a Twitter thing from last night. Last night, Aaron Harbert, executive producer of the show, I believe he's executive producer and a writer on the show, um, tweeted out a, a sculpture and said, Do, does anyone know what the title of this is? And, and he was playing all coy. Well, I know what the title is. And if you want some insight onto tomorrow's episode, you should find out. And there's going to be spoilers here. There were spoilers way at the beginning, too. There were spoilers throughout this whole thing. Maybe I'll add something in at the beginning mentioning that. But you should just know by now there's spoilers in all my videos. He tweeted a picture of a sculpture whose title was just Peace. So, but I mean, who didn't think there would be peace? Uh, what are the options? There's peace and there's just continued war. But the writers have always said that, yeah, it's all going to wrap up this season. This Klingon war arc is going to wrap up. So I don't think that's a problem. Now we get to the, the nitty gritty. What are the additional costs of this to the Federation? I think that part of the armistice is going to be Lorel getting... I'm just going to say Lorel in terms of the Klingons because we all know that she's the only smart one left. I don't even know if there were any smart ones aside from her. Lorel is going to demand that the spore drive be destroyed. Well, they're, they're going to want data on the spore drive. And hopefully the Federation is going to be like, ah, that's probably not smart. Everyone blew up at Burnham before when she offered Giorgio the schematics to the spore drive. And I was like, calm down. She just said yes. She didn't actually give them to her yet. I'm sure that she was just saying yes so she didn't instantly get killed right there. Because this woman's a freak and she just threw a little fidget spinner and killed 12 people. Anyway, hopefully Cornwell, who has gone off the deep end with things that she's allowing to have happen, will think better about that. How about this? We destroy it or, uh, like, just lock it up and make sure we never do it. And the clans will be like, well, how can we trust you? And, uh, well, I don't know. And somehow I think that Stamets is going to step up and be like, listen, uh, I will take the spore drive, I'll take the discovery, and I'll take Emperor Georgiou, if no one's killed her yet, back to her mirror universe and I'll just travel the mycelial network, and no one will ever see me in the spore drive again. I'm the only, me and Cadet Tilly are the only ones that really know how it works. And Cadet Tilly's honest as F, so she's not going to tell anyone anything. And we're just going to purge all the data, and somehow the Klingons are going to accept that. That's how I think we're going to make sure that the spore drives gets written of, rid of. But why is Stamets going to leave? Because the, this show seems to be gathering a common theme of characters that don't have anything else to live for. You got Stamets, the man he loves, uh, is dead, and his lifelong work can't be followed up on anymore because, oops, it accidentally leads to an evil dimension. You have Tyler, who's really dead, but he's the 
essence of Tyler crammed into a Klingon body, and the woman that he fell in love with hates him. Um, uh, you have Georgiou, who is Emperor from that evil dimension I mentioned earlier. Yeah, enough said about that. She just, she's got nothing, all she is is evil. And she was already willing to die, which, like, seems odd, but, eh, what you gonna do? And, of course, you got Burnham, who, once his war's all wrapped up, she's going back. And, actually, now that Lorca's not even a thing, I'm surprised that Cornwall hasn't been like, all right, you're coming back to jail now, because Lorca's done with you, and you're a mutineer. But, in much the same way that no one's given Tilly a field promotion, I don't think anyone said to Burnham yet, hey... You need to go back to jail. I just had this thought earlier today about Stamets. And I really don't like it because I really like Anthony Rapp on the show. And who's on After Trek uh, Sunday night? Anthony Rapp. Nerds! Makes me angry. I hope they don't get rid of him. I really like his character. Arr! He reacted just the, the right way. To Tyler, seeing Tyler, as I would have hoped. Ah, uh, no. This makes me anger the more I think about it, but it makes way more sense. And then maybe he can eventually go off and become the Traveler like everyone wanted him to be. Oh, man. That doesn't seem fair. So, I think that I covered everything that I wanted to. I don't know. I meandered a bit. So, let me know what you think about the ending of Star Trek Discovery Season 1 is going to be like. Put it down in the comments below. Feel free to come back here and mock me for how wrong I was afterwards. The important thing is comment down below. If you can, subscribe. I wonder if I'm pointing the right way. Is it this way? I can never get the pointing thing down right. Anyway, Adam, Corpulent Geek, thanks for checking out the channel and stop back here Sunday night. Uh, I am certain we are going to have some reactions to what occurred.